this video, we're going to continue our tour of feudal industries around the world and we're heading to Singapore, a country that I have a lot of love for and whose feudal industry I find fascinating. The country we know today as modern Singapore only officially came to be in 1965 and consequently its funeral industry is also comparatively young. If you enjoy this video please give it a like and subscribe as we post death and dying related videos every Friday. Now let's talk the Singaporean funeral industry. Facts and Statistics as usual, we will start with the stats and the most important thing you need to be aware of for this video is just how small Singapore is in a geographical sense. At 734.3 kilometers squared, it is so tiny figures just won't give you a good idea. So for the Aussies, this is it compared to Tasmania. I was going to compare it to the whole of Australia, but you couldn't see it. As for the rest of the world, yes, Tassie exists. Please include it on your maps because it feels very unloved. For US viewers, this is Singapore next to New York City. Remember, this is the entire country. For viewers from Europe, this is Singapore next to London or even next to the country of the Netherlands, which is thought to be quite small, which seems quite laughable now. This is it next to Hong Kong. And this is where Singapore can be found on the map. Can you see it? We'll zoom in a little bit and a bit more. There you go. Now keep these size comparisons in mind for later as it is really important. This tiny but very rich country has a population of around 5,637,000 people and like many countries it has an aging population problem. This population is made up of many ethnicities with the majority being of Chinese descent followed by those of Malay, Indian and a variety of other ethnicities in smaller numbers. And here is the breakdown of religions citizens identify with. As you can see, there's a big chunk of the population that don't identify with any religion, but the majority identify as Buddhist, followed by Christian and Muslim. Singapore's cemeteries. The Singapore we know today officially became independent in 1965, and by 1978 there were known to be 213 large and small cemeteries around the island from all points of history. But as the country quickly developed and the population grew, by necessity certain cemeteries, mostly the smaller ones, had to go to make way for the living. And by 2011, only 60 cemeteries were left. Today it has one. Now before you get up an arm about that, remember those maps I showed you earlier? And remember just how small this country is. The government very early on realized that body disposal of its booming population was going to become an increasing issue. So in 1998, the new burial policy was introduced to address the issue of land scarcity and limited burials to 15 years. After this period, graves will be exhumed and the remains either cremated or reinterred, depending on the religious requirements. Now, repurposing graves is very common in many countries around the world, but you would be correct in thinking that 15 years is rather short. This also means that decomposition may not have had time to do its thing completely. So for Muslim burials, the remains are exhumed, re-shrouded and then reinterred in a crypt of 8 to 16. And if you're interested how this all works from a religious standpoint, I will put a link in the description of the website of the Islamic Religious Council of Singapore who explain all of that. For non-Muslims, the remains will be exhumed and cremated. Remember, many aren't quite done yet. And the cremains will be put in a columbarium or the family can choose to have scattered them at the Garden of Peace at the cemetery. To add to this, the crypt burial system was implemented in 2007 by the National Environment Agency as an improved version of the traditional soil burial system in Singapore, allowing for optimal land use. The CBS burial plot consists of a concrete crypt without a base. The deceased are buried in these crypts, which are laid out in a grid to allow for more efficient land use and make the plots more accessible to visitors. The system is endorsed by various religious bodies in Singapore as it accommodates the needs of various groups in the community. The system preserves the dignity of burial in Singapore and prevents graves from shifting due to underground soil movement and erosion. It also provides a neater burial layout that lasts for years. But with all this being said, it should be noted that most Singaporeans choose to be cremated instead of buried in the first place. Indeed, aside from the Muslim community's religious requirements, it is so insanely expensive to be buried in Singapore because of the space issue that burial is now seen as some kind of status symbol for the super rich. I suppose a Lamborghini only gets you so far. 
When it comes to cemeteries in Singapore, while the government, the public and religious organisations recognise that it is certainly not ideal, they also understand the predicament they are in. However, while some countries and cultures, once the body is in the ground, no one bothers to visit, many of Singapore's predominant cultures are ones that would regularly visit their ancestors in cemeteries, seeking wisdom, coming together for family gatherings and performing tomb cleaning. But those rituals and family gatherings have had to be set aside because they just can't be done in a columbarium. And some wonder what the long-term impact of that will be because it's a significant part of a culture to lose. Some are also worried that as the country expands further that the columbariums will be the next thing to go and people will either have to throw their family members' remains out to sea or keep them at home which has other cultural implications. Funeral homes. Some of the oldest funeral homes in Singapore date back to the 1920s before its independence. These funeral homes have pretty much been left to their own devices to act on behalf of the community and the industry remains largely unlicensed and unregulated, not unlike many others. The only part that is licensed specifically are funeral homes with embalming services, probably because these are relatively new and embalming cases mostly only occur when the deceased expat needs to be shipped home. But in 2020, the government realised they needed to be more proactive. Reports surfaced that one funeral home had cremated the wrong body, and at another, the body of an elderly lady was left uncovered overnight. In the scheme of things, perhaps not the worst thing that could happen, but the uproar it created signalled a need for change. So the National Environment Agency conducted a 12-month study of the country's funeral industry to scrutinise standards and access manpower demands. This is because with an ageing population problem, Singapore's death numbers are going to double by 2040. This study was largely welcomed by the industry itself, which has for the past 10 years seen a massive amount of change. As one news article put it, while some traditional players remain, the old dingy parlours and boisterous workers of decades past have largely given way to professionally run businesses with better systems and smartly dressed crew. So it seems the change had already begun. While the results of the study have not fully been released yet, the NEA reported the need for the following. The need for standardised training, because at the moment most are simply taught on the job, which is great if you have a highly professional boss with high standards, but bad if you don't. Some looking to get into the field have even travelled as far as Taiwan and the USA to receive formalised training. There needs to be space to expand. At the moment, the NEA sets aside very limited spaces for funeral homes, so most are unable to provide embalming services or display coffins. Training that leads to licensing. The industry has been pushing for a number of years to have the entire industry licensed, not just the embalming part, raising barriers to entry. As we said earlier, throughout Singapore's history, anyone could perform funeral services, which led to unprofessionalism, scams and disrespectful practices. It also led to funeral homes being set up where they shouldn't be. In general, the industry wants to see that kind of stuff stamped out for good. Now this does make it sound like Singapore's funeral industry is a mess. It's not. I've been there. I've seen it. It's just young. This new generation have finally created the Association of Funeral Directors in Singapore to promote standardised and professional business practices throughout the industry. But I've also heard of what it was like 20 years ago and how times have changed. Funeral services and wakes. Many funeral workers in Singapore agree that the industry is becoming more secular and much of the population doesn't identify as being religious. Indeed, funeral services are dictated by one's culture more so than by religion, so Chinese, Malay or Indian culture rather than Christian, Taoist, Muslim or Hindu religious practices. But the one very Singaporean funeral practice is the void deck wake. Let me explain. Singapore's Housing and Development Board provides a lot of the housing in Singapore through apartment blocks. These apartment blocks are equipped with a variety of community spaces, and one of these are void decks, the space at the bottom of the apartment where you may come in from the car park, collect your mail. But these are transformed into nice spaces, often brightly painted and lit up, where the community can gather for social interaction. And it is these areas where many wakes occur in a very festive and lively style, and it have been for many generations. Many Singaporeans are unaware that this is unique to their country, and many young funeral directors, now realising as such, are fighting to keep the practice going. It appears in the modern day people are less willing to put up things that slightly annoy them, and noise complaints to the police are on the rise because of these kind of wakes. As one funeral director said, the modern day has brought less community, individual want over community needs. I hope the practice survives for future generations of Singaporeans. 
Singapore's industry is quite young by comparison to many other countries because the country itself is comparatively very young. So all the kinks haven't quite been worked out yet and anything to do with death is usually one of the last things to be looked at by a government and we all know it. But the country is known for its efficiency and progress so I doubt it'll be very long before these issues are resolved. And with that, let us know in the comments which country's industry you would like us to look at next. And with that, go talk death.